This is ODAT Chat, your instant connection to recovery and community, one day at a time. This podcast may contain strong language, sexual content, and spiritual truth. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to ODAT Chat. My name is Arlena, and I'll be your host. In case you didn't know, ODAT stands for one day at a time. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe on iTunes and leave us a five-star review. It helps keep the lights on. And you might be wondering about the purpose of the podcast. And what I can tell you is that besides wanting to clear up a lot of misconceptions about addiction and recovery in general, I also wanted to share the teachers, ideas, and exercises that have helped me on my own journey over the last 22 years sort of fall outside the parameters of 12-step groups. I have lots of books and resources for you on the website. So please check those out. And I'd like to share a thought for today. And in light of what's going on with social media these days, this one comes from Dr. Seuss, which is those that matter don't mind and those that mind don't matter. So there. In this episode, I'll be talking with Gabriel, who shares stories about his family of origin, uh, where he feels like his addiction started. He is now a father of three boys. One is 19, and he's got two little ones at home, and he's raising those boys uh, the majority of the time on his own. So um, it made for an interesting conversation when it comes to dating and many other things. So with that... I'll just tell you, I was very honored to have Gabriel on the podcast. He really was sharing from the heart a lot out of our conversation, and I think you will too. So with that, please enjoy this conversation with Gabriel. Well, Gabriel, thank you so much for joining me on the ODA chat. Glad to be here. So I wanted to start out with just maybe some background about who you are and stuff so people listening could get an idea of who you are. So um, how old are you? 43 this past September. Oh my God, you're so old. (laughs) I'm just kidding. I'm older than you, actually. I'm feeling every minute of it. All right. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, how long have you been sober? A little over three and a half years. Okay, three and a half years. May 8th is my sobriety date. So at this point, a little over three and a half years. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And um, how old are you? You have two boys. I have three boys. Oh, that's right. I'm so sorry. The older one, the the rogue. Just turned five. The just turned, blazer. Yeah, just yeah, right. Just turned five. Just turned eight, and a nineteen-year-old. And a nineteen-year-old. Yeah. He's a grown man now. He's not yeah. really a kid anymore, huh? Uh, yeah, he, he kind of acts like a kid. <laughs> he yeah. acts like his old man did. Uh oh. So. Yeah. Well, so nineteen. So that's like fifteen in woman years, right? Yes. Oh, <laughs> you hit the nail on the head. If that. If, if that. that. Right. Okay. And um, did you always live in this area? Yes. You're from California, San Yeah, Jose. born and raised uh, in San Jose. Okay. Yeah. And I'm Scared um, to death to leave. Why? I just I hate change. And I, I just have this, <laughs> I think that California is the greatest place on the I know, face I of the zero. earth. I mean, I've been to a few places, not a ton. Uh-huh. But anytime I fly home, I, I get tears in my eyes just coming in. Aww. I'm just like, I love this place. There's no place like home. Traffic sucks. Rent sucks. But yeah. I love this place. There is a reason why everybody wants to live in California. Absolutely. I mean, we're yeah. just a few hours from the snow. We're we have everything. A half an hour to the beach. We have redwoods, desert. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have our lakes. We have everything. So yeah. it is super expensive. All those things that I don't do. I always talk about how we've got the snow. We've got this. I never go to the beach. I'm never in the snow. <laughs> you never leave your house. I'm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just awesome. like to have opinions about things that I have no idea about. <laughs> That's my that's my that's your bag. Yeah, that's my thing. (laughs) That's my thing. Awesome. Um, so you've been sober for three and a half years. What was your drug of choice? Um, alcohol. Um, I did. I was into methamphetamines for a stretch, but I was by the time I got into AA, it had been ten years plus since I had last used that. So that was just like a little experimental phase. It went on for a little while, but it it, looking back, it really was a um like a lost soul type of a, a mm. thing. I was, um, you know, I'd lost everything and dove into that okay. and it worked for me for a time and then it didn't work for a long time, but I continued, you know, how wow. we do. yeah, yeah. That's uh, why do you think you started using drugs? Um, I think is because, you know, I have a disease. I mean, yeah. you know, I was around, everybody did something in high school. Mm-hmm. I just did it to the max. Um, <laughs> 
Were you always that guy that... Yeah, I'm finding, you know, I'm finding big time in the last few years that uh, I do everything to the extreme, mm-hmm. like we all say. You hear it all right. the time. Um, and to try and explain that to somebody it's that doesn't feel that way, that doesn't go that way, um, it's almost impossible. But right. whether it's um, in getting my kids ready in the morning for school or uh, into guitar playing or whatever it is, I mean, I just... Um, you know, it's got to be this way, and it's you know, it's very controlling and very um, obsessive. Obsessive, maybe. yeah. Yeah, we yeah. do tend to be uh, obsessive as yeah. like as a group. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing. God damn it. <laughs> I know. Well, I often feel like uh, people who have addictive personalities have such big energy, and mm. if we don't learn how to channel that energy, we spin out of absolutely. control. Absolutely, we absolutely spin absolutely. out. Absolutely, you, you have got to find your thing. Yeah, we have such big feelings, and I don't know about you, but growing up, I did not get a lot of, um, I did not learn a lot of coping skills, Mm -hmm. right? I learned those uh, after I got sober in the rooms and um, and through other teachers. But um, no, I I think uh, I think we all sort of fall into that. So tell me a little bit about your family of origin. Did either of your parents drink or no? In fact. uh my dad would have a little bit of wine. My mom never drank. You know, they they divorced when I was young. Um, my mom's house, I, I think that there was a, a bottle of rum in the cabinet that was there forever. <laughs> and my stepdad, like once a year, would make the, was is it rum and uh, eggnog or whatever you make? Yeah. Or brandy. Like a holiday, like a holiday yeah, thing. Yeah. And he would sip on that like once a year. <laughs> and leave the glass half. Yeah. You crazy guy. Abuse. What the hell? <laughs> what the hell is that? Uh, my dad had the box wine phase, but no, I have never <laughs> seen him. Phase. Yeah. That's, that's some Portuguese stuff classy. right there. <laughs> Keep it classy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, but we didn't have any type of intoxication really in my house. I know that, you know, there's some family members that, Adults that experimented with weed, you know, um, but I think that was just a seventies type of a thing. There was not a, um, yeah. I didn't get the vibe that I was living in a house where things were not going well at all times. I had a lot of good examples growing up. Oh, a lot of good, good examples. Yeah. Very good. And you have siblings? Yeah, I have um, two half brothers. Okay. I have two half sisters. Not really half sisters. Actually, they're not related, but they're they've been around for so long uh, that they step are sister? step. There you go. That's the, uh, okay. that's the word for it. I hate that word, but yeah, I mean, especially they, they if they've just, been in your life mm-hmm. and you have a good relationship. And then I have an older brother who passed away. I was thirteen. He was seventeen. He passed away of cancer. Oh, you were thirteen. But he was a, he was a, a full brother. Yeah, I was thirteen. Uh, okay. yeah. He was your only full blooded sibling. Yeah. So he and I lived in the house together with mom, and uh-huh. then my other two younger brothers. Lived with my dad and stepmom. Oh, okay. but we we're very close. So your brother died after your parents got divorced. Yeah, they divorced when I was like s- between six months and a year. Oh, you're a little. Yeah, guy. yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I never saw, I never had the dreams of them getting together. I, n- I never knew them together at all, right. and I never saw them argue. They did. They were a really good example of how to. Have a, be separated. Had to break and, up. Yeah. yeah. My know. parents were always really civil to each other. Yeah. And I think the Thank word you. was the story always was that they sat down in a room with the mediator and came up with a plan and st- stuck with that plan until I was out of the house. Oh, you know? wow. And uh, my wow. dad always came through and, and good dad. I mean, my mom might tell the story different, or but I, I but from your perspective, yeah. you had a good father as a role model yeah absolutely and your stepdad was good to you yeah absolutely and my stepmom is still very very present in my life i I just came from the hospital right now she has a broken hip yeah oh how did that happen uh the gym what yeah 70 is the new 40 or whatever they say yeah she's 70 years old and was doing something with the 70 Strap related oh, leg shit. thing, and she fell over on her side, and so. Oh my god! And this is just a little. Bit. So we all got all got to team up and be in service for the next like two months, wow. helping her out. So she's a she's That's a good woman. Brutal. I have really good good examples okay. of women in my in my life. Okay, so what the fuck happened to you? <laughs> well, let me just tell you, my grandfather mm-hmm. on my mom's side, my mom's dad was uh, was a raging alcoholic. Oh, okay. Now he got sober when I was very young, so all I knew him as was the uh, the jokester grandfather, a good okay. guy. He was sober. 
Yeah, he's, oh, okay. he spent, uh, I believe he died with 13 years of sobriety. He Did died he? when I was in high school. Okay. Did he get sober through 12-step program? Mm-hmm. Or yeah, he was, he was in Alcoholics Anonymous. He was in a rehab center. Huh. Uh, my mom tells the story of going to see him and waiting for this guy to come out and not realizing that the skeleton sitting in front of her for the last two or three minutes was uh, my grandfather. Because he was just sort of like, he he looked like Popeye. I mean, he had that ridiculous <laughs> sort of like... And he Big had a sailor arms. hat. Like, yeah, he was in the Navy and he was, uh, he did was he a eat fisherman. Did he a lot? Yes, he did. <laughs> did he have a can <laughs> And he ate the shirt? can. Crazy. Yes, that's a cartoon, Arlena. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Big anchor on his forearm. He, he had all that shit. He really okay, did. Wow. He was a he was a he was a character, you know. Okay. So um, I've heard that story about his him in recovery and uh, wow. My mom's mom. And him divorced a long time before oh, that. Okay. And she was never a drinker. She was the one trying to, you know, hold the shit together. She was the only Then on. she became. <gasps> oh, no. And she died of the disease. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. Very. She very, held it together till he got sober and then she started drinking? Yeah. Like many She's years slow. later. I don't know the timelines, but oh, I know wow. that when uh, they found her, she had a like a full glass of vodka on the kitchen table and she was out on her floor and in a coma and all that kind of stuff like alcohol poisoning or I, I i don't know 100 percent, but um i'd have to i can call my mom right now and ask her no. can you call her mom um but that's how i put it together you know it took me a while and i was like son of a bitch that's what she God. must have died from you yeah know? that's crazy uh bob my husband his grandmother let her let herself on fire on Christmas Eve. Oh, Jesus. And did she die from She that? died. Oh, my God. But it took her like two or three days. That's fine. So, well, I, she's drinking or something? Yeah, I'm she sorry. Spilled? She was she was an alcoholic, and um, she was drunk and passed out. She fell asleep with a lit cigarette. Oh, wow. And she was drinking and smoking in bed. She passed out, cigarette. That 151. <laughs> that's something, the, dude. Wow. That's gnarly. Yeah. Beat that story. <laughs> now I don't even want to sorry. tell my story. Did, did I just correct. don't believe that's so rude. Did I mention my brother died of cancer? Yeah, we, that's already bad. Can we get back to that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, only alcoholics laugh at things like that, right? Oh, yeah. We are so twisted. <laughs> it gets me through. <laughs> Oh, poor Bob. That is so crazy. Yeah. Well, they say that's there's that old Shakespeare um, line that tragedy plus time equals comedy. Yes. And I feel like, you know, it's been a long, you know, there's yes. that, that must have been so tragic for you. I think you mentioned that when you were young, you didn't realize your brother was terminally ill. Yeah. Um, that's kind of, you know, that's kind of, I think, more, some of the origins of my story is that he uh when he passed away i i i it was like he died in a car accident you know i've used this reference before um i can remember clear uh laying in my bed it was around christmas and my mom coming in mm. and it was this weird that that silhouette of her i can still see it to this day and really? it was like i knew something bad i happened. knew no i knew that my brother had died I had, and but i had no idea that he was he might die at all and so she came in and she sat on the edge of the bed and she told me, I just, it just changed everything, you know? And, and, uh, I thought we were on the same boat, me and my mom and my dad and all those people. And then a couple months later, I found out that, um, everyone had known mm-hmm. like they do. They tell you, Hey, he's got six months mm-hmm. and uh, nobody told me. Oh, um, wow. and I was fucking pissed. And I think yeah. I've been pissed ever since, you know I mean? I was pissed for years, you know, I'd say that in the you last- that I wasn't let in, that I thought that I could have done something that, you know, it's going to be hard to tell this story. But um, he was over at O'Connor Hospital. And um, I remember, like I said, it was in December when he passed, when he was bad, Mm -hmm. you know, and I was going to go to my first dance at school, like this Christmas dance. Mm -hmm. And uh, so my dad was going to take me over to the mall to go get clothes for this dance. And Mm -hmm. that's all I could think about. Selfish, self-centered, whatever. I'm fucking 13. You're 13 years yeah. old. You know, the, yeah. I, I couldn't wait. And you I remember know. looking out the window at Valley Fair, just going mm-hmm. like, a few more minutes, I'll be over there. And my uncle says, hey, you know, your brother wants to see. <laughs> and I go in and he's laying there. And I remember it's like pitch black. And I remember just thinking, fuck, it's dark in this room, you know. And uh, mm-hmm. and he 
he held my hand. And this is a guy that we used to fight, you know, mm -hmm. and he's 17 brothers. and screw him. Someday we'll get along, but not right now. And, you know, and he held my hand for a long time. And I remember just thinking, okay, I'm ready to take off. And the lady came in and changed his bedpan. And I was just like floored. And I think I just kind of put a wall up. Like I knew mm -hmm. that wasn't right. You know, I didn't know that sh shit was going on. Obviously my mom and dad I knew that. I mean, mm -hmm. it probably been happening for a long time. Mm -hmm. That was the last time I ever saw him. That was the last time you saw your brother. Yeah, and so when I, when he died, I started putting together all these fantasies of what I could have done. You know, like I would have made him hold on or, or or whatever, whatever. You, you know, would have done something different. But I just felt I was kind of embarrassed um, because everybody else knew. I had cousins that were younger than me that <gasps> it kind of came out like everybody knew. I mean, and I was like. And I remember like closed door conversations, mm -hmm. the hush when I entered the room, all of that started to flood in over the last, you know, mm -hmm. things that had happened over the last six months. And I just felt like such an ass. And at the same time, you know, eighth grade, that's like sort of when the social life takes off. And my mom was always at the hospital. So I was skateboarding and all to late evenings, uh, making friends and all that guilt, just like. Like you should have been spending time with yeah. your mother. And, uh. I really took my mom to task for that for a long time, a long yeah. time, you know, and yeah. not so much my dad. Cause I just, um, my dad wasn't around that much. You know, he was a weekend dad. It was um, her probably, it was probably her decision. Like how much to let. Yeah. Well, the story I got, I mean, my mom and I are pretty open about it. My, my mom didn't know what to do, you know? I mean, right. she, she didn't have any practice she was, in that. Baby was dying. Yeah. Yeah. She's busy with that and I get it. And she, oh, they, God. they talked to professionals and, mm -hmm. and the, the one conclusion they came to is let, let Gabriel come to his own conclusion. That was an answer, you know? And, um, yeah, but you were in denial about it. You oh, never absolutely. asked. No, because it, it really never entered my mind. I, I, I don't even feel like I was blocking it out. You didn't realize that was an option. Yeah. Not, not a 17 year old. Like my brother used to kick my ass. This guy doesn't die. You mm -hmm. know, you know, the following years were really tough for my mom, you know, cause I didn't, oh, yeah. um, oh, my God. I wasn't very sympathetic, you know, to, to your mom? No, you know, I you was kind of like, I had my own thing and I didn't like talking to her about it because it was always, I like to think about my brother in life, my brother, my, and everybody else thought about him in death, you know, cause you know, when you're 45 years old and you're thinking about 17 year old dying, I think you, you think about things different. I was a kid and I was like, I want to remember him for the guy he was. And you guys are bringing me down. And my mom was, uh, my mom's a big crier. You know what I mean? She's a very um, emotional person. I should say emotional. Um, she was a mourning girl. Absolutely. Time. Yeah. And I didn't get it. And I'll tell you, to kind of skip ahead is is the morning my oldest son was born. I remember I had to come home from the hospital uh, just to clean up and then, you know, run back over there. And I remember walking in the bathroom and turning lights on. And I was, you know, I'm looking at myself in the mirror and it was like, it was like for the first time I knew what my mom felt, you know, like. <sighs> To lose yeah. a child, like I hadn't lost mine, but I had a child now, and Suddenly. I just remembered looking at myself and just going, "You fucker," you know, like how you know you were pretty, you know, you're hard on your mom. And I put her through a few more years of that shit, <laughs> anyways. I mean, <laughs> right. you know, as we do. <laughs> but with, she was thought she was going to lose you too at some point. Oh yeah, I mean, I got away with a lot of shit because you know she, um, huh. and that just stopped recently. You know what I mean? Where I can kind of like, eh, you know. It wasn't like I was rude to her, but, you know, like borrowing money I knew I'd never pay back, you know, that type right. of stuff. Because what are you going to do? You know, that that type of a, mm -hmm. of an attitude. And, and, I mean, I had to come strong with my amends to that woman. And now, of course, it's a, you know, it's a living amends. But, you know, within uh, – to get back to, you know, drinking, uh, within a year I was, I was drinking and using. Mm -hmm. um, harder and stronger it felt like than anybody around me, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going to pause really quick. Mm -hmm. Well, so isn't it interesting how once you become a parent, suddenly you have, it's like all the things that we do to our parents comes rushing back. Like <laughs> until, until I was a parent and cared for somebody, like love somebody so much. Um, I didn't realize how much my parents loved me. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, my dad was the emotional, he was the one that was emotionally available. My mother was not. Mm. Right. Yeah. yeah. I know. So usually it's the other way around, but, um, or I don't know, maybe, maybe I 
think it is, but whatever. Um, that's how it was at my house. And um, when my parents divorced, I stayed with mom, but I felt like, um, so she was kind of hardcore, but I feel like she couldn't now as an adult, like I get that because she didn't have any coping skills. Mm -hmm. She couldn't handle her emotions. So she just shut, she just shut down. Yeah. Some people have the ability to do that. Mm -hmm. I just never did. No, me neither. I mean, I'm very, I wear everything on my sleeve. Yeah, you me know? too. And, and sometimes I think it's like a badge of honor. And then sometimes it's like, you know. It's a blessing and a curse, right? Yeah. Because. Just like the opposite is. I mean, if you, you know, you're emotionless, you know, it's. Yeah. It I mean, I think uh, people with addiction are often um, classified as being overly sensitive. Mm -hmm. And so I, I don't think we're overly sensitive. I think that we did not learn any coping skills. Mm -hmm. Right. And. And I don't know if that was true for you, but do you feel like since you got sober, like how old were you when you got so you so thirty nine? Okay, so yeah. just before you turned forty, you got sober, and mm. how did, did you go through rehab or just go? No, to I just or? we just walked into a meeting, and then uh, the the our, the journey began. And did you have like you know they talk about a moment of clarity? Did you have a moment like you were using and um, drinking and? Mostly not doing as many drugs, but what happened where you decided that you should quit? Well, my family began to completely deteriorate, but your family of origin or your no, my I'll, I'll, so um, I was married. Okay. I'm actually kind of in the middle of divorce and all that crap. Um, but in and she's giving me carte blanche to speak a little bit about this. She's in the program too. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, I married an alcoholic mm -hmm. and um, just so happens that she married an alcoholic. <laughs> That's <laughs> yes. how we did. Um, well, and, you, there's a saying that water seeks its own level. <laughs> yeah, right. So does alcohol. <laughs> Vodka right. seeks its own level. Yes. Um, so it was it was just that very typical uh, one last argument, one last. I mean, mm. we, there, a ton of stuff building up to that. Mm -hmm. but there was no real talk about, Hey, we need to do this. Let's try it and, and, and start and stop and start and stop. It was literally one morning waking up. And, uh, I remember we had had a huge argument and I woke up the next morning and she's sitting there on the computer. And I remember thinking, I'm going to start another argument right now. And I was, what are you doing on the computer? You know, yeah. big man. Pick a fight. Yeah. And she said, I'm looking at meetings. I'm going, you can join me. And I can remember Wow. Going, oh fuck, and, and and it was like out of all the answers in the world, that's the one I think I didn't know I did want to hear. You know what I mean? Oh, um, yeah. I felt very positive about it from the second that it was mentioned. Like um, it was a, like a viable option. It was yeah, like going to be a you solution know, of some I, kind. I, looking back, like I think that she, she was such my partner in drinking. Mm -hmm. You know, and I know that I have to separate our stories most definitely, but we are connected, you know, mm -hmm. in the hardest parts of our alcoholism that I don't, I never thought that may, maybe that she would agree to that because we had ties uh, to AA, you know, her, right. her, she's got family um, that's deep in AA that's got years. <laughs> Did I tell you that she used to be the babysitter? Yeah. The yeah. Meeting? I was secretary well, see, we, 20 years ago. Some funny stories. We spent about a month and a half at living at her dad's house. Who's uh -huh. got, Who's Jay got Z. real years, yeah, you know, and and he's influenced a lot of people and his wife, you mm -hmm. know, they're real AA. Mm -hmm. We spent about forty days living there in between our apartment and the next apartment to be ready. Uh -huh. Drinking, fucking. I remember we were uh, staying in the spare bedroom where all the AA literature was. Oh shoot! Fucking vodka bottles behind the big book. <laughs> oh. That was our joke. Like, hey, it was. We'll yeah. hide it. And we used to lay in bed and read these um, <gasps> the comic books. The con you know, like they had all the joke like these um A, -A comic A, A yeah, just A, -A comedy and, and just funny oh, sayings and stuff. Really? And we're like, this is stupid. You know, that's literally <laughs> like fucking lame. That's Lo and behold, one. you know. Here we are. But what my point was that I never thought because we had an example, and so yeah. we knew that wasn't gonna work for us. So I thought that she and I were on the same page. So when she came uh -huh. out and said, Hey, I'm going to AA, I was like, Fuck. Okay. Like. All right. Maybe you know. Maybe if you did one. agree to that, maybe we're maybe we're good. And uh, wow. You know, going. To, I think walking into my first meeting, I think the obsession had already lifted. Are you serious? You know? So, did you have like a, an official like moment of clarity? Or now, the moment of clarity, I 
It hasn't come yet. <laughs> if, if it has, I, I really don't remember that. I do remember the first time realizing I was an alcoholic was just like yeah. this. It was like a, I don't know, in 2005 or something like that. I remember clearly walking down the hall, it was just regular day. And I just stopped and I just went in my head. I was like, oh, fuck, I'm, I'm an alcoholic. Yeah. I wasn't drunk at the time. I hadn't just had a fight with my wife or anything. No, Nothing. It just hit me and I was like, oh, shit. Like... <laughs> I got to deal with it. It was like finding out your transmission went out on your car and you're like, fuck, I got to take care of that. <laughs> and I took that thought and I just stuck Put it in my back pocket. pocket. <laughs> yeah. Like I'll deal with this later on. But I remember yes. from then on, it was it, whenever alcohol did rear its ugly head in the form of a, you know, not many blackouts, but like a hangover or an argument or something, I'd go, Shh, well, it's because you're a fucking alcoholic. Right, right. Right. And then I did the whole thing where I would joke about it with people and go, well, right. You know, we're alcoholics, you know. Yeah. And nobody yeah. nobody was really laughing, but <laughs> but me and her, you know, everybody else was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're all they're all, yeah, you were yeah, like yes. crazy. Yes. <laughs> yes. We were that couple. <laughs> yeah. You should really do something about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It took me a little while, but <laughs> Yeah. And then so you, so no rehab. So you just that's how I did it too, by the way. Do, I don't know yeah. about you. I feel jealous that I didn't get to go to rehab. Um I guess. I mean Sometimes when you get up, you know, a lot of times when I get called on, I'm like, yeah, I don't even want to talk because I don't got one of those stories. I mean, I, I don't. I was a couch alcoholic. I, yeah. I I did drink myself to oblivion every fucking night. Yeah. I think I had, in my years of real alcoholism, I probably had the flu like <laughs> six times. And I found a way to drink within that 24 hours. You know, at some point, if I felt better, you, you drank. Oh. I was an alcoholic. I, yeah. I drew, If I was in a car after five o'clock, I was drunk. I was Drinking and driving. Wow. So, and you never but, had an accident? Nope. Never got a DUI, nothing like that. Wow. I didn't yeah, either. I was, an, I'm a, I was an awesome drunk, Carlina. Clearly. I used to be the guy at the party. You were the designated the cop, drunk? When the cop showed up, said Gabriel. And I'd go up and I'd have this, I could just snap and kind of go, yes, officer. Yeah, I, yeah, we were being loud. I, I understand. Okay, wow. I'll tell him to quiet down, shut yeah. the door and just be like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, fuck, I'm fucking hammered. But I was kind of oh, like, wow. I had those, that ability. Um, that is so bizarre. Yeah. Um, and you would black out. You had a blackout. I wasn't really a blackout drunk. Oh, no. You I blacked out in the first time. Yeah, sometimes I wish I would. Now, was, you know, the first couple times I drank when I was a kid, mm -hmm. I did. Um, I wasn't a guy that got phone calls like, dude, you fucking did this or that, you know, you. You remembered you know, everything? Shit on my lawn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> shit on your lawn. But I also had this- I'm, you shit on I'm, someone's lawn or you just- No, I did not. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, maybe I did black out. I don't know. Um, you never know. Reverse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Trust who me. Who knows? We're in reverse. Um, I'm a big, I'm big on going to bed and mm -hmm. sleeping. So like, there, I'd be the kind of guy like, I'd be fucking hammer party and then go, fucking tired, I'm done. See ya. <laughs> and, and go to bed, you know? Peace out. So I think that's probably why I didn't black out. I wasn't the kind of guy that had to just, I wasn't like the uh, the captain Party of the night. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was yeah. like, all right, I'm fucking done. See ya. Get out of my house or yeah, go I'll just go to bed. You don't have to go home, but Oof. you can't stay here. I wish I could have done that. Yeah. I had to burn it down. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. was I was the blackout. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I spent time around people like that, but you know. Yeah. I was the blackout puker crier. Like I joke around that I had two pers like two alter egos. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was either wimpy Wendy or badass Betsy <laughs> I was either crying or fighting right <laughs> and so you sometimes both in one evening yeah oh, yeah I'm not, I, not pretty I was at parties with girls like you yeah I, I, I go, what's going on with her yeah, why I was she just crying? I think I, and I, I'm sure that uh uh she would disagree but I, I was I thought it was just like really fun and like to be funny and <laughs> I have her on um, my list to interview <laughs> next <laughs> she'd be great <laughs> uh I just um that's how I saw myself. And, yeah. and I don't know. I, I really didn't get a lot of complaints. Um, so why was it a problem for you at the end? Because you and you and your ex were fighting? Yeah, that? because uh, stuff got real bad. I mean, there was... Um, in, in terms of your painful pain in the relationship or unmanageability? Yeah, we had lost... We had just lost trust in each other. I'd put... Um, I'd never... I put my hands on her. Okay. You know, and I was arrested for a domestic violence. Like, how bad? Did she go to the hospital? No, but I mean, how, what can I say? You know, listen, I it mean, gets worse. I mean, I, just to put this into perspective, um, you know, Bob sponsors a lot of guys mm -hmm. and um, he had, he has 
or whatever, uh, a sponsee that went to prison mm -hmm. for four years because he nearly killed this girl. Yeah. But, um, of course, I don't treat him any differently than – I yeah. mean, I actually love this guy. He yeah. did it in a blackout. It's – it's scary the things that we do yeah. when we're when we're blacked out, right? Yeah. Or I mean, we're I, really drunk. I could sit and and justify all I want. I mean, I I took anger management classes and or what did they call them. Help? Yes, and yeah, yeah, I did. I mean, uh, she might disagree, but I didn't think that that was in me. You know, I mean, mm. when it happened, I was like, holy fuck! You know, it wasn't like, come on, you know, I I, yeah. I had no desire to see my wife cower before me. You know, oh, I, I yeah, and um. Um, I'm getting into dangerous territory as far as like justifying my behavior, but yeah, I was drinking. Um, yeah, it was a, it was a horrible, horrible time okay. in our marriage in, in this That's very fair. short period of time. And, uh, mm -hmm. I shoved her to the ground and, um, I think about it every single day. You know, I think really? about that. I think about my, yeah, yeah, I do. I, I'm pretty ashamed of that. I mean, it's just whatever it's, um, yeah, man, I wasn't fucking raised like that. You know, I didn't right. see that in my house and right. I know that she did growing up. Mm. And, uh, you know, we had conversations about, I said, you don't have to worry about that. You know, this is, uh, you know, you, you're, like, that's I'm not, not your, that guy. well, that's not, I, I remember just telling her, you know, she had a lot of craziness in her family growing up. And I said, eh, you're with me now. You, you don't have to worry about that. I come from a love and look at what I, you know, what I did. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it, uh, I, I, I participated in the, to the demise of, um, of that relationship. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, I gotta live with that or whatever. But. Yeah. Okay. So that's sort of one of the things that led you into yeah, wanting to get sober. And then she has, you know, whatever she would ever want to talk about, you know, her part. And then mm -hmm. and that was mine. But I remember it just, it was without even telling her part. I mean, we came back out after, you know, because I, I spent the night in jail and I, I had to be away from the house for a week. And then when we came back, we walked around, it was like a month and a half longer before we got sober, but we walked around the house like on eggshells or, or, or looking at each other like, I cannot believe that, that happened. fucking happened. Not just what I did, but you know, the other stuff, you know, I, we were both, that's how I felt. I don't know how she feels about it, but I remember just going like, fuck, like you were my girl. Yeah. You were, how did we get here? How did we get here? Um, and we used that month and a half to drink like, you medicated? Never before, you okay. know, beyond. I can remember putting my kids in front of the TV with a Ritz crackers and being like, you're good. I'm in the other room and doing those things that, thank God, we didn't do for long. But we were doing those things, you know, that we just never thought. Well, I just never thought that I would participate in, you know. I guess you'd call it abuse, child abuse in a way, you know, or uh, neglect. neglect. Let's call it neglect. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just yeah. we were doing those things. And then um, mm -hmm. she had the sense to say, you know, this enough's right. enough. She felt probably felt guilty. Yeah, I'm sure. And and um, I don't know that at the time I was, quote, unquote, man enough to say, hey, let's go get sober. I, I've often said that that morning if she would have said, hey, let's go fucking jump off a bridge. I would have said, went. let's go, you know, um, I needed something and she had the right, to, you know, what turned out to be the right answer that Thank day. God. Maybe looking back, do you feel like God was leading you towards surprise? Like, was that like a God led solution or? Yeah, well, I think that everything is, I think that, um, did you grow up with religion? No. Or any kind of spirituality? Uh, no, I found someone on my own right after high school for a while. Yeah. Um, like in a uh, church? Or? Yeah, my buddy was in a played in a church band, and he oh. had always been so like, yeah, okay. I can remember being on meth, playing bass in a church band, yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. just like that. I remember the lady yelled at me, and I quit the band. Anyways, yeah. I had some idea of like Christ, you know, what I mean okay. that, that was and and Christianity, Christianity. And, and stuff like that. Uh -huh. Um, but coming out of that, I knew I was kind of there more for the girls and for the, you know, um, not community? but yeah, the community, yeah, community, <laughs> female community, the, the, the included hot chicks, cutie community. The cutie community. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when I came into the program, I wasn't really freaked out by that. Like when you hear people say Talk like, oh, um, some people really freak out about yeah, oh God. and I I can't really get with that. Like I'm just just leave me the way, just just. Point me, you know, and I was very into the, I'll fake it till I make it if I, if I okay. need to. I wasn't really, uh, you know, I'm not a huge rebel. I'm, you know, I like to maybe make myself seem like I am, but I'm just like, oh, let's do this thing. You know? Okay. That's kind of how I felt. Yeah. So. You wanted to get better. 
Yeah. Yeah. Anything, yeah. anything it took, you know? Yeah. To desperation, the gift yeah. of desperation. It didn't take about. me long to sit in a room and look around and go, okay, these people are happy. Mm-hmm. It's long sobriety. This can happen. I can do this too. So I didn't yeah. really fight it. Okay. And did you get a sponsor right away? It took me about a month. Okay, that's actually. Um, she got a sponsor first, so it was like, oh fuck that. <laughs> I'm a little competitive. <laughs> yeah, I mean that was okay. kind of because everything we were doing was like these firsts. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, we're talking about living a life on a couch. You know what I mean? It's like okay, yeah. drunk on a couch, but living in two different universes. You know what I mean? And amazing. all of a sudden, we're like oh, excited about something. It was it was a cool it was a cool couple of months you know what i mean experience the whole pink yeah cloud and yeah all that. yeah exactly oh no no we're not gonna fall off the pink cloud <laughs> not us oh, really? <laughs> yeah you know what I mean? uh spoiler alert i'm getting a divorce <laughs> <laughs> spoiler alert. <laughs> right. yeah well there's you know you change so much once you get sober and start working steps and and listen this isn't a, um, a podcast about any particular 12-step group mm. but that's how i did it too Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, I I realize that there are many different ways people, you know, people hate to hear this, but I've been around long enough to see people leave the program and do fine. You know, go back, you know, go back to drinking or move away and then you don't hear from Mm -hmm. them. But we, you know, I typically hear about people who come back where it didn't work. And that's what I relate to because I have no. We just saw that this morning. I know. You know, I know. I mean, that's that's a good. Did you ever relapse? I uh, it took me uh, sixty days to get thirty. That's right. Okay. Yeah, it took me sixty days to get thirty, and I remember um, this guy saying, um, "Shouldn't you have sixty days?" And I was like, all spiritual, and I was like, "I have exactly what I'm supposed to have." <laughs> that's a good answer for it. I know, right? Hey, I don't pretty... intuitively know how to yeah, handle I have this exactly situation. Where I'm... <laughs> yeah. I just, <laughs> Such bullshit, yeah. right? right always been a sales girl, right? Always. Mm. I don't know. I just but all don't. you can think about is yourself. Like, you know, I know a guy, one of my uncle's friends is bad. I mean, just did the Coke and did the this and the alcohol. And uh, he has like 30 years, but he hasn't been to a meeting in 20. You know, and I see him like yeah. all, at the holidays and he's always like, hey, he's so proud of me and all that. And he, um, and he still walks a walk, does all the yeah. stuff. He just doesn't go to meetings. He doesn't just have like, sponsors anymore. He just – and I kind of go mm-hmm. – I like going to meetings though. I, I like I the too. friends and all that stuff. Like I have adult friends. I have, you know, yeah. um, so I we never really. So many friends. And yeah. I, I was going to ask you, I feel like probably I would assume I've never been anywhere else really. Um, but I would assume that wherever you're from, you kind of love your meetings, but I really feel like we have something special. I've been to a lot of different groups, but what we have um, in our particular community is really special. Yeah. I feel like, what do you feel like makes our group so special? Do you mean the room that we're in in the morning or are you yeah. mean in in this, this area. Uh, in the valley, we have what eight hundred meetings every week. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. I mean, they say you know if you don't like one, go to another one. I know. I don't know. I, I, it, if it's the enlightened culture of Northern California, I think it's. Um, I mean, that sounds so, like such We're a California such hippies. snob. We I are do. such hippies. Um, but I, really. I don't know if that's high tech like, hippies. That's not, that yeah, thing? or something. I mean, I don't. I don't know the answer to that. I, I think uh, other than to say just an enlightened culture, you know, around us. I mean, yeah. um, I hear in other places where they talk about the anonymity and, oh, no, I would never let my boss know that. Yeah, Everybody knows I'm sober and they're, everybody's down with it. You so know? I was going to ask you about your anonymity. Like, do mm. you, um, like, professionally, do you tell people that you work with that you're sober and that you're part of a 12-step program? And Yes. Um, almost everyone in my life that's a regular knows. In fact, I'd go as far to say as everyone that's a regular in my life knows. Mm -hmm. Work um, could go either way, but they're young guys and they do the let's go out afterwards. And uh, I went in there kind of knowing one guy. Mm -hmm. Um, So I kind of made it clear and they were, they're down. I mean, they, they, 
Find it interesting. Do you, do you work out of an office? I know you're a, a, a locksmith. I don't know yeah. what kind. Well, I do like electronic locks. Oh, okay. Um, like so a, like card readers and stuff oh, like that. So it's not like the guy that's going to help Silicon you. We're in Silicon Valley. Yeah. I, I, I was like, you're not like Up a the key. Up the- <laughs> yeah, we, don't, they don't even do, we don't even do that. Um, it's all electronic. Okay. The card readers. Yeah. All it's doors. Yeah. It's the- called, it's like uh, access hardware installation oh, okay. and oh, um, okay. so card it's readers. high tech. Yeah, and I love it. I absolutely love yeah. it. Um, it that's one of those God things, you know, the way the job is, the type of work, the guys I work with, the mm-hmm. hours. Because it wasn't very long ago that I was like, "What am I going to do?" You know, I had lost a really good opportunity. I was working at a city job. Mm-hmm. Um, Doing what kind of work? I was working in an automotive department for the city of Santa Clara, oh. and that didn't pan out. And I thought it was, and I was banking all sorts of. I work for the fucking city. I mean, it's kind of weird. It's I mean, hard work- to get fired from the city. Well, I didn't get fired from the city, but oh. but it's just I was trying to get on permanent, didn't get on permanent. Oh. And when you work for the city, it's weird. It's like you, it's like you have this special ID. It's like my, like almost being like a cop. Like when I went to go rent the place I'm in, <laughs> the guy's badge. like, "Well, you know, uh, let's get your references, this and that. Where do you work?" And I said, the "City of Santa Clara." And he's like. Oh, oh, when can you move in? Really? You know, because along with that goes fingerprinting and all. Uh, you know, it's a, it's just okay. this weird thing. And it's I really a valid, felt, validation yeah, I might be process. full of shit and just imagining that, but it really felt like I was very proud to work there, and it was going to be my career forever and retirement oh, and all this stuff. It came so with uh, it, some sort of um, social s- significance. Yeah, at least in my head, <laughs> you know, I'm very important up in my head. <laughs> <laughs> So when it didn't work out, I, I just, you know, panicking and just um, didn't know what I was going to do. Mm-hmm. But looking back, the hours, all sorts of stuff just wouldn't work out for what's going on in my life, you know, with mm-hmm. the amount of time that I have my kids and this, that, and the next thing. It's just an, another example of being exactly where I'm supposed to be, you know, right now, you know. And that's interesting. I was going to ask you about that, too, because you're a single dad mm-hmm. and you have your kids full time. I have them Almost full time. I don't know what the percentage is, but I have them every other weekend. Okay. So mom, well, let's say mom has them every other weekend and two nights a week. Oh, okay. And so we're going to get to the point at some point where it'll be 50-50. Okay. But for the last two plus years, yeah, it's been- um, You've been the primary caregiver. Yeah, primary. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's unusual for- men in the program it feels like yeah i think it's kind of unusual for men in general which is it's you know again this is california let's be enlightened now you know sometimes you know what, listen you don't have a man bun so i'm all good <laughs> 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 i was at the monterey Bay aquarium during the week at a yeah. sales event there was like i was with all these people from work and i saw these two dudes and forgive me if this sounds super judgy but um they were like both had man buns yeah. and both were like wearing homemade hemp cloth. <laughs> Don't tell me they were carrying their babies strapped to them, were they? Uh, no, but um, I bet because they were running around, right? Yeah. They were old enough to be to appreciate the aquarium, but they're yeah. little teeny people. Mm-hmm. And I was like, these two dudes have bitches at work. I'm thinking, <laughs> right, right? right? I bet mommy's at work and these two dudes are the stay at home. Well, she's got a career and all she wanted was a guy with a man bun and then she got it. <laughs> You know, listen, if you are not a samurai, you should not have a hammer. Okay. (laughs) Very good. That's all I'm going to say. (laughs) No, I don't have a head enough hair on top. I wish I could have a man butt. Just so I could not have a man butt. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, I could have, I wanted to, but no. (laughs) I just decided against it. (laughs) It was a conscious choice not to have a man butt. I get it. Yeah. But do you think like being a sober dad or being a dad in sobriety, I, how has that been? Like dating's got to be really hard. It's weird in the program because I stayed away from dating for a long time just because, first of all, I, I, I've- Your divorce is not final. Yeah. And she's in the rooms and, and we had to be kind of careful of each other's feelings. And, and um, I wasn't- able since I had the kids so much I wasn't able to be the guy that went to five meetings a week I literally right. was going to one meeting a week oh. and that became the room that I know you from right. which is very 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 special and very important to my Saves. heart yeah. so the idea of getting into a relationship and that going wrong I, I couldn't afford it yeah. you know I mean right. um couldn't I just that room. yeah I just couldn't I mean they're, they're my sisters you know that's yeah. the way I see it um yeah. they're very important people to me my options were limited I wasn't out 
you know, looking around too much. I just was living life, you know, and then, uh, not too many female coworkers. Or <laughs> absolutely zero. zero. And plus, you know what? I'm so bad. I'm so bad at that. Like knowing if someone is interested. Yeah. I just don't want to, I just don't want to deal with it. Just come up and <laughs> just grab me by the shoulders and shake me. You know what I mean? So right. I can, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to or... keep moving on with my life, you know? <laughs> Yeah, flash me. <laughs> oh, God. No, because no, that's like the opposite. Then I, yeah, yeah. No. I'm a prude. I'm a big time prude. <laughs> too far? <laughs> yeah, too far? Uh, you know, sometimes you don't know where the boundaries are until you cross them. That's yeah, all right. Yeah. yeah don't Oops, test too far. Me. Yes. Yeah, I'm like a... Uh, You're super conservative. I did not I, I did not see that coming. On some things, I, I am. I just... Uh, I don't. I can't really get into that just because I just am. I just I am. You know. I know what I like, and I you know. Just conser- conservative. Yeah, let's use that word. But then I, I have met a woman in the program, and that just came out of nowhere. You know, I met uh-huh. this beautiful it girl, and it happened organically. Yeah, that's and and she was she's in the program. Mm-hmm. She's from another set of meetings. Um, oh, okay. So she's got her own. I mean, she's got sobriety that's longer than mine. She's got mm-hmm. people that she knows. So. Um, I, I wasn't putting up blockers right away. You know what I mean? I was like, mm-hmm. you know, letting this kind of thing happen. And now we're in a nice relationship. It's tough. I mean, we both have kids. You said you're in a nice relationship yeah. now? Oh, I think the last time I talked to you, we were. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, right. Did I screw up the rest of your podcast? No, no, no. no. But no, I haven't talked to you. Because, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have this joke because we were going to put, you know, on Facebook, they have the. The you know, relationship They're sense. in a relationship. Yeah. And I was like. I thought you guys it. broke up. You broke up for a minute. Yeah, for a minute. Okay. And, and it was, there's a lot of outside issues, you know, um, okay. for us, like the her and I, yeah. fine. I mean, there's just, there's just some things and I, and I want to work them out, you know, okay. I mean? like, um, that's the so brave thing to do. Yeah. I mean, I, I've been walking around like, you know, I've gotten used to being single yeah. and not the perks of like women. I, I don't mean that by, I mean the, the, I'm scratching my ass on my couch or, or walk, not having you know. to consider somebody else. Thank you. Why don't I put, I put it so gruffly in whatever I mean, it is. So That's eloquent. So gross. <laughs> no, not kidding. having to consider another person, yeah. you know, and, um, it's easier for sure. And so we came back to this and we, and we started talking and instead of, instead of running off. Did you miss her? I absolutely missed her, oh. but we didn't, we didn't talk about it. We just kind of um, You're like, this isn't working for me. And she's like, yeah, me neither. And yeah, that yeah. was it. Because I'm not going to call her out, but she's she's pretty strong willed. So she's like, well, me too. You know, yeah, and I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> and then we did, we did, we both came together and we're like, yeah. thank God, let's just at least talk. Let's okay. just talk. You so know? you missed each other and you realized yeah. that there's. And that's kind of where we're at now. I mean, we're okay. definitely, we're exclusive, we're dating, oh, okay. but we're trying not to act so alcoholically and being like, <laughs> okay, let's do everything. You know? Obsessive. It Obsessive. can't be all or nothing. Yeah. yeah. We, were, we were doing that. And it's funny yeah. because she didn't call me out on it and I didn't call her out on it, even but though we both. you the brakes a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just. Uh, Take we, it a little slower. <laughs> my joke is uh, I was going to post on Facebook a picture of us and say, guess who's, it's complicated. <laughs> complicated we didn't do that (laughs) no need no need to flash everything on facebook (laughs) yeah that goddamn thing oh god i had to take it off my phone again did you (laughs) yeah you slap your own hand don't you i take yeah i uh i so i took it off uh yesterday as a matter of fact just because yesterday was the inauguration and um you know that'll date the podcast but uh the whole politics situation yeah. i just couldn't deal and then i was like yeah. cuz i started unf- unfriending people because then i realized did you go like, down that road <laughs> i did I, yeah. I and i actually actually still today feel kind of good about that mm-hmm. because um i realized that there it's like do i really have 800 friends no it's like I, i'm yeah. old and i'm very social and so i've worked a lot of places and i pick up friends wherever i go go yeah. to a lot of meetings um, so I have, you know, a large, and, but then it was like, wait a minute, why are, why do I have you in my life again? You're just causing me nothing but heartache. Right. Why, why are you, in my, why? And it's, it's like, you're not in, you're not in my actual life. Yeah. Why am I letting you create problems for me? And, and I, listen, I don't have problems with people on social media, mm-hmm. but, um, I did yesterday mm-hmm. because of some, you know, when people have different and it's just, I don't know, whatever. I, I'm not going to get into politics itself, but the outcome was I realized I don't um, need to be friends with everybody. Yeah. And that was kind of a big deal yeah. for me because I love, I, and you know what? 
I'm, I'm one of those annoying people. I love everybody. I really do. So I, I think I do too. Yeah. I, and, and if I uh, typically don't agree with somebody, I don't care. Think what you want to think. And yeah. be, I don't care what your politics are. But when you yeah. kind of come after me. That's where I sort of did. You have an engagement? Did you? Did were you engaging with somebody? I didn't necessarily. You know, if you God forbid you state an opinion on the internet, right? Then the lynch mob comes out, and uh, that's what happened. And as I stated an opinion, (laughs) (laughs) you dummy. (laughs) Also, on the internet, look what happened. Um, Nobody showed up to his inauguration. Oh yeah, the picture of the yeah, I I did see that. Well, like twenty people I know posted that picture. Yeah, it was hilarious. But it then it then it's the um, go to. Oh, that's fake news. And then, um, you know, the idea that, um, I can't believe you think that, you know, and we, and people from both sides Mm -hmm. are saying the same thing. I cannot believe you think that Mm -hmm. from both sides. Right. So I thought, you know what, if you, if you and I see are so polar opposite and political views, you know, listen, I don't attack anybody Mm -hmm. except for that one thing I thought was funny. It was, you know, um, but I don't come right. I don't, you know, jump on somebody's. There's a difference night. between putting something out there that can be seen as comical, and and then and attacking. Somebody, right. So I felt you know. attacked, and it, yeah. you know, there were there were people. Pe- there was a few people, and then there was like a pile on thing, which I never have experienced before. And so I deleted the post. Wow. I unfriended some people who are not in my life. And who mm. are not adding anything but negativity mm-hmm. to them. And then I was like, why am I allowing this? Mm-hmm. So I put the kibosh on that. And then I took it off my phone because it becomes this habitual. Listen, I mean, yeah, I have that addictive personality yes. like everybody else, right? And the thing of the matter is, is I have really exciting projects going on in my life. Mm-hmm. You know, the podcast is one mm-hmm. of them. But I am excited about... Um, the projects that I have in my life, the people that I have in my life. Mm-hmm. And I'm a naturally happy, positive person. That's my natural disposition. And then if something is drawing me to the darkness, I'm going to cut it off. That's my responsibility. Yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. I mean, me, when it comes to social media, I'm absolutely addicted. It's, it's, yeah, I get it. You know, and, and I'll call it what it is Facebook. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I pick up my phone and I do, I do three things like time, weather, Facebook, time, you know, it's oh, constantly. T- 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 yeah. Like, cause somebody, somebody asked me the other day, how often do you go on during the week? I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Week. Like, like every, I, every yeah, every three, four, I, I just, it's just Two like picking time. up and I don't, I don't yeah. interact. I don't read things. I'll just <laughs> You're scroll. The lawyer. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just. You, and, you're hella funny though. You do post. I, but then when I do post, I'm trying to be funny I, or too. to picture my kid. Yeah. Every once in a while. But I just don't want to get involved in that because I have friends that 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 are highly they do do the political thing. Yeah. And I just feel like gross, you know, I when know. I when I'm like, come on, dude. Like I, I don't care that you feel that way, but do you really think that anybody gives a shit that you're oh well, does anybody give a shit that I'm playing guitar on freaking but you know, nobody gives a shit about anything. They don't. It's like, well, I, I mean I, I like to see what people are doing. Like I like yeah. I bet you guys are doing the guitar challenge for a little while and all you and your circle, all the guys that were yeah. that was I looked at I watched those I watched all those well, videos. You, you weren't liking mine. Yes, I didn't well, I? Well next time. Did you see that coming back in April? <laughs> darling. Wait, did you see that? Um <laughs> I think it was at the end of the year, Facebook kind of give you a recap of like how many pictures you... Yeah. So, dude, 10,000 likes. I had... How many you liked of people's yeah. or how many let people liked of yours? How What no, was it? it? Remember it had all the little likes going yes. to like a yeah, 10,000. Well, I like 10,000 yes. things. Okay. I was at like 3,800. <laughs> And I, and I think I'm a douchebag when it comes to Facebook. I'm like, I'm like, 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 love, yeah. love, 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 love. <laughs> My buddy funny, Chris, funny, funny. I thank God, because I would think of him as like, he's manly and he, he doesn't put up with that shit. He had like 7,000 likes or something. <laughs> I was like, you fucker. <laughs> yeah, hilarious. yeah. <laughs> totally. That's what I, you know, and you know what I do like an alcoholic? Oh, that means I'm great. I can go on Facebook twice <laughs> as much now. I'll, and I'll never be as bad as Orlina. <laughs> <laughs> So funny. I was like, oh my gosh, I am so it's, obsessed. That is a slap in the face. And you know what it was? Um, I started getting like a repetitive stress injury in my hand. No way. Like my thumb would hurt. I would switch hands. I would go left hand. I can scroll left handed just as good as my right the hand now. Lawyer. Get up, soldier. You've got things <laughs> to like. I mean, that's just how, obs- I mean, wow, that's, I was like, yeah. okay, that's, there's, I, you there's know the line. Here's something you might want to try. 
try liking things that you really like and ignore the I, things that I you do. don't. I do. I do. Wow, then you are a super nice person. Because you know, I, there's I'm nothing so, I'm not worse. kidding. I am a happy person. <laughs> there's nothing worse when you get on Facebook. You're like, holy shit, I got 27 messages, and it's you know, Joe Blow liked. <laughs> And you're like, fuck, is this him? And all he did was like it. That's a little creepy, huh? Yeah, you know what I mean? You could just tell he woke up one morning and was like, oh, fuck, boom, 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 like, 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 like. And you're like, oh, you're just in a happy that mood. Means or... Nothing, Joe. <laughs> right. I don't like too you. Much. <laughs> yeah. You do too much. It means nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. It, you tell me you love me every day, it means nothing. <laughs> yeah. You know, Withhold that shit once in a while. Like, God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so no, I'm, yeah, I'm a little freaked out by the Facebook thing. Like, I think a lot about deleting people. Mm-hmm. But then I'm like, but what if, what if there is that party that I don't get a bite to? What uh, if, whatever. Man, the fear of missing out, the FOMO about mm-hmm. Facebook. So here's the FOMO. Fun. Is that what they call that? Fear of missing That's out. That's fucking great. You haven't heard that. And oh, I have God. not. Yes. Mm, see what happens. Who made that up? Who Dude. knows? You know what else bugs me? You know what, you know what else I, I realized today that uh, back in the day, I think it was somebody to me that was talking about... Um, how maybe it was just you just now or I had a thought earlier that was like everybody goes has like this like things are cooler now like there are after parties now it was like we didn't have after parties mm-hmm. we just went to the next party yeah right right we just you know party till the sun yeah. came up you know we changed venues there was no fucking <laughs> after, after party, after party. Why well, it's, for the, it's when the party dwindles down to just the cool people <laughs> yeah. you know or something like we're that. leaving we're going to yeah. the after party it's yeah. like Bitch, what are you talking about? Well, when the sun know, comes up, that's the after party. Even with our group, we're getting out of hand with this, you know, the coffee before, the breakfast after. Oh, I mean, I love it. All I ever want The coffee before. Listen, this meeting starts at 6 a.m. in the morning and people are meeting for coffee before Hell the 6 a.m. Yeah. meeting. It's crazy, isn't it? And I'm there. I know. I'm Somebody so called me I out today. Go. They took the picture and I'm like, you know, I, and <laughs> I'm getting a really nasty look right now. And they just sent me a picture of my face and they're like, you look really happy. And I'm like, I think I'm kind of done with the pictures, you know, like, uh, but if you don't take a picture and I'm not in it, I'm going to feel it. Her. Yeah. 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 What is that? So it was so funny because Kevin posts pictures about the breakfast every Saturday. Yeah. Which, by the way, I would like to take credit for because uh, Mark, Bob, and I were doing breakfast there every Saturday for like three years. We I don't invited remember Kevin. that. I don't remember that. We invited Kevin <laughs> <laughs> one time and he started inviting everybody. Well, Kevin is the mayor. He is the mayor. Yeah. He is hilarious. That guy, I. That he needs guy... to take over from, for Dave. Now I realize we're getting a little specific. About well, I'm telling you. He uh, he just makes me feel good. I know. God, he's well, such a that, great guy. The uh, dinner that they had for him, you weren't there, I don't think. No, I, I forgot why I couldn't go. I um, was bummed. Fantastic. I mean, the the family and all that and his daughters. And I mean, I can't be that happy. You know, it was for his four year, five year. <laughs> yeah. It was and it was a spaghetti Nicole. factor and all that. Yeah, and they were all there. And uh, you go, this is exactly what this program is about when it comes to the extension, you know, not just you being sober and saving your own life. You're talking about the family and all that. And these yeah. people looking around going, wow, look at all these people for my son, for my husband, for my dad. Oh, God. It was great. It was yeah. fantastic, you know. Yeah. Um, That's awesome. We had something similar to that when Bob turned 25. He had – I. You know, he'll tell you they were all my friends, but these are all people who really love and admire him. We had mm. the whole extended family, yeah. like his mom, the nieces and nephews, yeah. and, and uh, it was a, sort of a meeting format, and people got up and talked about. Oh wow, that's yeah, it was really cool. cool. Was, Bob's great. Yeah, he's like he's what's he doing? Where's he at? About? He's a jujitsu. Oh, I, that would have been my guess. Yeah. Yeah. So Saturdays will be my podcast day, and he'll be a jujitsu. You know, I was at your twenty twentieth. 20th? Uh-huh, the big yeah. party. Yeah, I remember that was one of those things where I didn't know anybody. I was so awkward. I mean, I'm just, I wanted so <laughs> bad there. to be at the at the church thing, right? It was yeah. at some hall. It was at a hall, yeah. And just wanting to, wanting to be a part of so bad and then getting there and just being the wallflower. <laughs> I'm like, me, a fucking wallflower? I'll kick the door. I used to kick the door in, you know? Like, <laughs> it was here. so humbling. Yeah, yeah, it was so humbling coming yeah. into this program and playing high school all over again, you know? like Yeah, it's super awkward. Yeah. Yeah, it can be. It takes a little while to sort of um, get comfortable with yourself in a social yeah. setting all over again. Yeah. It's this self-consciousness, which is something that I actually drank over in the beginning. God, I think we all did. Like, you know, when you're a teenager and you're sort of coming of age and you're super mm. awkward, you don't know who you are yet. 
Mm-hmm. Right. And then so we start drinking. And so, you know, you get sober and then you go through that awkward of who am I now? Yeah. It's like, I'm not who I've been pretending to be all this time. Cause you know, I don't know about you, but I felt like a monster. Yeah. I hated who I was. But I you want- came in really young. I came I mean, in at 25. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's still sort yeah, of like we were mingling with social life. I mean, I came yeah. in, I was like, all right. Social life. I, you're not supposed to have a social life at 43. It's supposed to be right. like a couple of your friends, maybe a couple of golf buddies. That, yeah. All of a sudden, I'm I'm on a Wednesday night walking into a room with 70 people, and this that's not right. You know, <laughs> to me, I'm like, this is not right that I should be talking to this many people. Yeah. And they're coming up and shaking my hand. I'm like, I don't know how to handle this. Like, this is I like don't at know. Men's meetings or just like or, or just meetings. in general. Like, why mm-hmm. am I here on a Wednesday night and all these people are, are? I don't even know really how to put it in words. It was like I should be a normal man. At home, normal. putting my kids to bed, and that's it. I yeah. should not be meeting all these new people and having all these new <laughs> friends. You know, I shouldn't be having friends. <laughs> that's how I thought about myself. You know, I mean, that's and so now funny. it's like, oh, but then all I wanted was the ability to turn down an invite. That's kind of like all I want socially. And now I'm, then you would have arrived. <laughs> yeah, now I'm kind of there. But it's like yeah. I love my group. It's not yeah. too overexpended. It's not um it's the right amount of people. Mm-hmm. I, I, the events that I go to are all with the same 50 faces for the yeah. most part. Yeah, um, we do there is always and and for me it's uh having to uh, find the balance. Mm-hmm. And really I feel like that's been the theme of my sobriety is recommit. Mm-hmm. Cause it's easy to rest on your laurels over a long period of time. So recommit and uh, find the balance, right? You know, it's easy to get, you know, I like to do everything like more is my disease. Right. So, and that goes along with meetings and partying and sponsoring and sponsees. Right. And, or I guess that's sponsoring and sponsees are the same thing, but um, you know what I mean? It's, yeah, yeah. The only thing I do in moderation is self care. <laughs> Yeah. How crazy is Everything that? Everything out is just putting yourself out there. And, yeah. is, cause, because when I do actually submit to the mm-hmm. step work, it's fucking magical. Yeah. It is magical. But it's it's work, you know? I mean, it's... It's, it's difficult it to face the painful things. Yeah. I it mean, is. it's... Um, that's it, a, Sobriety is not for pussies. Sorry to... No, it's not. not. <laughs> it's not. It's not. I mean, it's not for the faint of heart. And it's, it's not. You um, have to have... It requires But what's courage. wild is that we, we all have faint hearts, you know, at, uh, on some level. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's, but we have to power through. And that's that's what the people around us are for, you know, pushing us forward. Yeah. And um, It's a support group. Yeah, it's a support group. In God every damn it. Society. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Goodness. What don't you get about that? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Well, listen, I feel like we're, so you just come up on an hour and I could talk to you forever. We'll have to do a part two at some point because yeah. um, there are so many other questions that I wanted to ask you. You know, there's so many different topics about, uh, you know, recovery, you know, questions around, you know, like when someone relapses, how mm-hmm. soon do you trust them or trust them with what or you know, how do you find balance and things like that mm. or how you stay sober? But um, maybe the final question I'll ask you is, um, do you have, what is your weekly routine or do you have like maybe a day, maybe since this is one day at a time, mm-hmm. we'll end with how do you stay sober one day at a time? Um, start off with something that my friend Ollie told me was to make my bed every morning. Mm-hmm. That's that's how I start. I've heard that many times. It's humbling. It's, yeah. um, it's attentive. Mm-hmm. It's routine. Um, and it makes me say a prayer. Okay. Um, I have gone through stretches where I do not do what I just said I did, mm-hmm. of course. <laughs> you know, yeah. so I'm not <laughs> bullshitting. That's anybody. why we recommit. But when I am, yeah, when I am recommitted, uh, it starts, it starts with that. It's, Make your bed, um, say your prayer. While I'm making the bed, saying the prayer. Do you have a specific prayer and or do you just talk to God? I made, I have my own, my sponsor said, come up with something you want to. Um, is it that the same or, thing every day? Yeah, either that or it's the third step prayer. And it's very okay. based on that um, uh-huh. because I, I find that if I go on and on that I'm just chanting and I'm not – I like to actually try to think about what I'm saying. Right. Don't um, do Which is not easy. Right. You want to emotionally engage. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I get it. And then walk out my um, bedroom door mm-hmm. with that. You know, in my oh. in my pocket, you know what I mean? Okay. And that's the start, That you know, because I got a lot on my plate. Like everybody, everyone do. does. I'm sorry, I shouldn't say it like that. But I walk into a room of two little guys that are looking up at me like, show me what to do. Yeah. And I can go either go left or right, you know. And that's how, that's how, that's how I'm doing it now. Are, will, you, are you doing a meeting every day? No. I go to, I can do about one a week, on a good week, maybe, maybe two. Okay. That's legit too. That's not a me being lazy. I mean, that's that's you know with the kids and all that. That's kind of what I can. You do. You have little ones. 
It's hard. Yeah, I got little guys. And, and we don't uh, – between my, my ex and I, we decided not to do the thing where we bring them to meetings and do the babysitting oh, no. anymore. Yeah, we don't – we – you know, it's not a lot of well people around there. Um, <laughs> oh, a lot of people start knowing my kids and it's like, whatever. So I feel good with where I am. I mm-hmm. mean, because the meeting that I do go to is solid as hell. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm do able you, to keep in contact with people. Do yeah. you connect with uh, somebody? On, well, you, you're connected with people on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah. Um, there'll be a couple of days I go by where I might not talk to anyone in the program, mm-hmm. but texting um, right. all the time. Yeah. And I have a sponsee. He's, you know, wise beyond his years. And so mm-hmm. he and I talk a lot. And that's just just that. Just receiving a text is the start for me to, right. to refreshing my feeling moment, connected. you know, and feeling connected. Um, so I try to keep it kind of simple because if I overthink it and think that I need to start going to more meetings, then, you know, then I start to panic. You know what I mean? So right now, as of today... That's working for me. Okay. Yeah. Seems reasonable. Yeah. And um, you, how do you end your day? Um, yelling at the kids. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> In shambles. I am. I've gotten off of the TV thing. Um, what? Yeah. I mean, I do oh, watch a little man. bit of it, but okay. I find myself when the boys go to bed, because they're kind of my obsession right now. What time do they go to sleep? Uh, the last one goes to bed probably around nine. Between eight thirty and nine, and this is the two, one of the yeah the, the two, two little, little guys ones. yeah the older ones he's off he doesn't live with you I'm not living with me now just kind of wrap the day up and once once he goes to bed nine I find nine myself nine. kind of looking around the house like I'm done you know I'm ready to instead of trying to burn the night down and and <laughs> and power it out um, laying in bed I'll say a prayer okay um, about ninety percent of the time I've been pretty good with that mm-hmm. um, and that's it or I'll call my or my sponsor will call me at nine o'clock. And it'll end my day like at that. At night. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. What a great way um, to end the day. In fact, I got to yell at him because it's been a couple of weeks. I, mean, I know he's been busy, but. Busy. Yeah. So I try to that's begin. That's just a word for poor time management. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is. I, uh, I do. I try to begin the day thinking about things in AA and uh-huh. the, end the end the day in the same in the same manner. Okay. You know? Yeah. So. No, oh, that's a good, that's not? a good way to wrap it up then. Awesome. Well, listen, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Wow. We'll have to do another round. Uh, lots to talk about. I'd love to. Okay. I feel great. like, honestly, I could talk to you. All I, know. <laughs> I just want to say, and you cannot edit this out, but I want to <laughs> tell you that you and your husband are beacons in this program oh, to so me, sweet. especially um, early on. You guys were pointed out to me as um, examples and you've far surpassed that. I love oh, being around you guys and I appreciate you. that. And I think you're doing good things here. So thanks for so. having me on. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thank you for listening to Odat Chat. Please visit odatchat.com for more episodes, to leave feedback, or suggest topics and guests. Until next time. <laughs>